Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Midnight Tales, and this is page two. And um, we're gonna do some color blocking on this page, so I'm gonna be up and out of my seat um, a couple of times, but this part's pretty straightforward. We're gonna put the mechanisms in and the fastener, which is gonna be a magnet. So there's two flaps. There is a small flap and a larger flap and they're just a difference of one inches. So this, the smaller flap is four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. The larger flap is five and a half by eight. And you're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side and a half inch on the five and a half inch side. And you're gonna um, install it to the left and right. So for page two, I wanna put the larger flap on, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the, um, the left hand side, sorry. <laughs> I got a little catch in my throat. Um, I'm out of allergy medicine, it's killing me. It's killing me, Smalls. Um, so there's our five and a half inch, and then the smaller one, left hand, uh, right hand side, is gonna be the four and a half um, inch flap with a half inch score. And they're gonna overlap a little bit, and that makes it easy uh, to place a magnet. <clears throat> I'm gonna have the, oops, that didn't look straight. Hang on, let me see what I did. Oh, I got a little bit of a bubble. I'm gonna try to. When I do this, what I'm doing is I'm pushing my score line out a little bit uh, to straighten the page instead of lifting it off because it was close but not perfect but now as you can see it's perfect all right <clears throat> so that's done and then it looks like i did the same thing on this side okay now they're perfect there we go um we're gonna put the larger flap on the bottom and then the smaller flap i drew a quick reference line so i know that my magnet needs to go in between those the edge of the flap and that line I'm gonna get my white tape so I can go over the entire magnet. And I wanna be careful that the top edge of the tape doesn't get too close to the edge of the flap because I want to be able to cover it with my paper. And because I do really narrow margins, this is gonna work. Now, if you were doing <clears throat> quarter inch margins, you would probably need to make this flap a little bit deeper so you have a little more room to um, push your magnet down. You know, either make this, uh, if you made this, uh, this one a little deeper, I'm sorry, so that it came down a little bit more. So just something to consider. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you do want the magnet on the two flaps. If you put the magnet on the base page, then it has to travel through lots of layers of paper. And then, um, and then whatever photos you put on top of that. So you're just adding layer after layer after layer. And what I have found with these basic gray um, 3 8 inch magnets is you can pretty much put four to five layers between the two and then it really starts to break down. So, and when you think about it, just a single flap has paper on the front, the back, and then the cardstock. So that's, th that's uh, three layers, right? But in this case, it's only passing through um, this. At, yeah, at, it's only going to pass through one layer of designer cardstock here. So, um, and then I could still put a photo here and not have to worry about it um, uh, being too thick or having too much uh, to pass through. Wow, I'm having trouble with my words. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, what am I gonna do next? So I am using this pattern, and um, this pattern is pulled back in from page three, so I'm using this pattern on page two and page three. Pumpkins, very fun, very fall, or Halloween, which is also fall. <laughs> Good grief. <clears throat> everybody's doing well. I don't know what's up next. Um, when I release this today, later today, um, I'm actually releasing two projects, this and a Blue Fern Passages. I keep wanting to call it Passions. 
but it's passages. And, um, wow, sorry, coffee, too much coffee. Uh, and then what's next? I don't know. I have to check with Julie on what my next project is. I think it's going to be well-groomed, but I'm not sure. But I know you guys are waiting on that, so. And I don't think the new Stamperia stuff is here yet, so it'll probably probably be another graphic project. Okay, so I had mentioned that we're gonna do some color blocking and this is where it's gonna start. Wow, well, do I wanna do that? You know what, let's go ahead and get the inside layers first because I'm, I'm not doing color blocking here. Or here, so let's go ahead and get these down. I like to put my papers down as, as quick as possible so that I don't accidentally repurpose them. <clears throat> it's another uh, warm day here in San Diego. High humidity, high heat. I guess in the West in general, it's been pretty hot. I think we're supposed to get a break over the weekend, which would be nice. <clears throat> I have to get up early and get going before the uh, the house gets so hot that the air comes on and then you guys can't hear me. <laughs> In fact, one of my pages yesterday, the very end of it, I just turned off the audio because I wanted, I was like two minutes away from finishing the video and the air came on. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna turn off the audio. And uh, you didn't really, it was mostly just visual anyway. Really, I wasn't really saying anything. Well, most of the time I'm not. I just blab along. There's there's not a whole lot of pearls of wisdom coming out of my mouth. <laughs> if it weren't for you guys, I probably wouldn't talk to people most days. I just don't get out of the house much. It's sort of the nature of retirement and then everything's been locked down for so long. I'm really anxious to at some point craft in a room with real people again. Okay, so we are gonna color block here. And, oops, I did not ink this. I've got this green paper, and then I've got some more of the pumpkin to pull in. So I'm gonna put the the, lar the smaller piece in first, and then I'm gonna trim this down to be, you know, not so much of the uh, spider web paper. This one I inked. I think I didn't ink the other one because I knew I had to trim it down. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna share with you, and I've said this before too, um, I don't build my albums in order. Um, in this case, I did one and eight, four and five, and then, um, four and five, one and eight, three and six, and then the last two pages I'm doing are two and seven. So it's kind of odd. No matter what, you're gonna have enough paper to cover the album. But as you go along, if you're not building it in the same, if you're building it one through eight, one, two, three uh, consecutively, you may find that some of your papers cut through um, in a way that you didn't expect. <clears throat> Because I'm on page two, if I was building it in sequence, chances are I would have had enough of this to cover my panel. But because two and seven are my last two pages, I didn't have a continuous piece that was the right orientation. When I go back, I have a piece this big that would have covered the outside of this panel, but it's going this way. And I don't really like my words going the wrong direction. It would have looked like this. So I did have these two pieces, so I'm gonna color block here and use this pumpkin to cover that seam, just FYI. Um, and I've mentioned it in other videos, I do build out of order. So you may find that you have to do some ad hoc redesigning if you don't have a solid piece to cover this, and then this is a way to work around that, right? But like I said, if you're building it one, two, three, four in sequence, you'll probably have one whole piece that you can use this way. So because it's eight by eight, you're cutting your 12 by 12s, you're always gonna have a four inch strip um, from the top and a four inch strip on the bottom so that it really depends on um, where you take 
your first four inches from. Are you taking it off the top and then you have a four by 12 or are you taking it off the side and have a four by 12? And um, that's, knowing what I know now, I would have changed the orientation of how I cut that. You just never know. But like I said, there's always ways to work around it by doing a little bit of color blocking, which by the way, I think makes, makes the whole thing look a, a more interesting. It adds visual complexity without, um, without having to do a lot of, you know, super fancy things as far as the interaction of the album goes. Keeps the album pretty simple from the interactive perspective, but visually makes it look pretty complex. Okay, so this should do it. Oops, I'm tripping over myself. And it looks like I need to take a slight bit off the top. Let me make sure I'm out of the hinge. Yep, I'm gonna take a sliver off the top and we'll be good. All right, we'll ink it and lay it down. And then we'll spend a little bit of time uh, color blocking that front panel. I just panicked like I forgot my magnet, but I didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. And so, this is going to be uh, essentially the same flap design. We'll use different designer paper for page seven. So if you want to go ahead and cut those flaps, you can do that now. And as always, if you click on the show more, the first thing you're going to see is the material list and links to our shop. And we really appreciate it if you give us a chance. If you're in the United States or in any of its territories, we'll ship to you. And... Um, if you scroll beyond the material list, that needs to scooch up a little, um, you'll see the cut list, okay? So if you wanna pre-cut. Uh, some of this stuff you can't pre-cut. Uh, if it's a color blocking, you really do need to measure it. But, um, but all of the uh, black pieces, it'll give you the cut list for the uh, black interactive pieces, not for the designer paper. Ugh, I was having trouble getting that out of my mouth. This, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I'm kind of going back and forth. If I want to color block it, this is um, a border strip from the 8x8 collection pack that I just cut out. I'm going to use that to um, pull this all together. I like the way that looks. So I'm trying to decide how I want to measure. How, how wide is this? Seven eighths, okay. I think these are four, four, and four. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the midpoint here and the midpoint on this strip, get the strip down and then cut these to fit. Try to kind of walk my brain through that. Okay, there's the midpoint, and I'm gonna mark it on both sides because it's really easy when you have a thin strip to drift up or down. There we go. hard to see but I've got the midpoint it's not ink the midpoint marked on both sides and it's far it's hard for you to see it but it's the the graphite is shiny so I can see it and then I can use my magic eraser to take it off once it's installed hopefully I got this just right go. <clears throat> I 
that looks good. Okay, now based on this location, I can trim these out to fit so that I have a nice border and a black line between, which I think makes this pop out. When it's side by side, you still see it, but I just think that little black line just makes it, it magnifies it. It's a little more work, but I think it's worth it, personally. to know I don't think we're color blocking on page seven because I think I had a strip that was large enough but I'm certain of it yeah you can you can always find a decorative border to split the page if you want so let me tell you what this size is so this wound up being trimmed down to three and a half three and a half by uh, three and seven eighths. But again, I would measure it. Um, it could change if you don't get your strip in straight. If your strip is up higher or lower, it could change the size of this panel. Okay, I'm just gonna turn the whole thing upside down and uh, bring the, I, I'm a big fan of bring the paper to you don't lean over your paper, bring your paper to you, your edges to you. And I do that personally, I think it's a, it's a better technique, but I also do it because I'm recording and you don't want to see this top of my head, or I don't want to cover up my hands with my head as I'm recording. So I kind of got in the habit of that uh, for that reason initially, but it's much easier. I can see this edge way better than that edge. <coughs> Kind of, it's a lesson I learned with fussy cutting too. Is you don't move, you don't move your scissors. You move the paper around. You know what? I trimmed this. It needs a little more. I think I laid it in upside down. Oops. Okay. <laughs> going to do it. Let's see. Look there. Almost like we planned it, right? I'm happy with that. Let's get some ink on it. Glue it down. So, like I said, um, then I want to turn this right back upside. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right side up. Which means it needs to be upside down. <laughs> Confusing, I know. But always check, 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 check. You know, flip the up, you know, make sure you're, you've got uh, both sides going right side. I've done that where uh, one side is right side up and then I flipped it over this way and it was upside down because I had somehow turned it end over end instead of left to right. And one side was, oh, so, so frustrating. But there is a fix if you do that. I'll tell you what it is real quick while we're walking through this. If you do that, if this is right side up and then you turn this over and this was all upside down, because these are pocket pages that are held together with tape on the edges, you can actually use undo, take your pocket page apart, let it dry thoroughly, turn it over and glue it back down. So there is a solution if that happens. It's very frustrating, but you can, you can fix it. You would just have to run uh, undo right on this, the edges where the pocket page is formed. It's actually up top and bottom, not not left and right, because this is where the pocket is. But you'd have you'd have to get some undo across that tape line, and it works. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. That's it. So that's page two. Okay, be back soon. <laughs>